the megastars, the millionaires, the masterminds. Seriously wealthy, glamorous and influential. They are the rich and famous. They know that two heads are better than one. They are the soulmate stars, the dynamic duos, the power couples, with double the money and triple the fame. Born on the same day, 25 years apart, they are the soulmates of the silver screen. Five houses, a net worth of $200 million and a handful of Oscars. Not to mention Jets, primo movie roles and true love. It's been a storybook romance for Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. His first line to her was, let me father your children. It worked, she did, and he did. Michael was Hollywood royalty, a TV and movie sensation before the Welsh teenager Catherine tap danced to her big break in London. But when these two stars finally met in France in the late 1990s, their not-so-fatal attraction launched an A-list supercouple. Being the son of famous actor Kirk Douglas opened many doors for Michael Douglas, but it was still a slow rise to stardom until the 1984 romantic adventure comedy Romancing the Stone, when audiences fell in love with his lovable roguish character. Then came his worldwide 1987 hit Fatal Attraction with the bunny boiling Glenn Close. But it was the role as Gordon Gecko in the iconic 80s film Wall Street that earned Douglas an Academy Award. At the height of his popularity, Michael Douglas could command a hefty sum for his roles. He became sought after for his slick, worldly characters like the sexed up cop in his huge hit, Basic Instinct, opposite Sharon Stone, which grossed $400 million. Catherine Zeta-Jones has carved out a talent for characters with a razor-sharp edge and sardonic wit, like the double murderess Velma Kelly in the 2002 film adaptation of Chicago, which won the actress an Academy Award. From an early age, Zeta Jones's exotic looks, along with her singing and dancing ability, suggested a promising future. But it was in a street acting role as Mariette on television's The Darling Buds of May that made her name. Her first major lead role came with The Mask of Zorro, opposite Spanish heartthrob Antonio Banderas. The following year, she co-starred with Sean Connery in the film Entrapment and sealed her fate as a lasting screen goddess with a $10 million fee. In 2000, she took a pretentious role in Traffic with future husband Michael Douglas and it was love at first sight and a $3 million deal with OK Magazine for the wedding photos. It's an enviable lifestyle, dividing their time between their luxury homes in California, Aspen, Bermuda, Mallorca, Swansea and Wales, their two young children in tow. The couple have also invested a staggering sum on a rural site in Quebec, Canada, which they plan to turn into a luxurious ski retreat. The actors, turned property moguls, fell in love with an idyllic rural residence that once belonged to a Franciscan order of monks. Apart from her acting career, Zeta Jones makes serious money as an advertising spokeswoman, receiving an extraordinary $20 million to endorse T-Mobile phones, and many more to be the global spokeswoman for cosmetic giant Elizabeth Arden. Seems we'll be seeing this couple on the red carpet for decades to come. Zeta Jones says she has fidelity in her genes. She grew up in a small Catholic fishing village where marriages stick together. Her parents have been married for more than 40 years and that, she says, is her blueprint. Let's hope her old man is on the same page.
It's a romantic tale. Two young Italian guys brought together by a true passion for fashion. Surviving on pasta, bread and a shared dream to link their names into one of the most prestigious fashion labels in the world. And they did it. They are Dolce and Gabbana. Life is sweet for those who can afford to wear the extravagant designs from this high-end fashion house. The label was started in 1985 by Italian designers Domenico Dolce, who comes from Sicily, and Stefano Gabbana from Milan, when both men were still in their 20s, and it is imbued with their deeply Mediterranean nature. By the end of the 90s, their sales amounted to about $500 million per year, and the dynamic duo were opening boutiques in Paris, New York, Singapore, Hong Kong, and in most European countries. The over-the-top designs are adored by Hollywood and the music industry's A-listers, Madonna, Kylie Minogue, Jessica Alba, Nelly Furtado, and Angelina Jolie for their sexiness, irony, and sense of humor. Dolce & Gabbana offers men's and women's collections of evening wear, knitwear, leather goods, scarves, ties, shoes, underwear and beachwear. Perfect for the globe-trotting rock star or starlet, keen to make a red carpet statement. The fashion house has two central lines, Dolce & Gabbana, which specialises in more expensive luxury items, more formal and timeless and D&G, a more casual line that follows an urban inspiration, setting trends rather than following them. So what's the key to their success? Stefano Gabbana says, when two people collaborate the right way, there is a third person that is born. We have different tastes, which means that together, we tap a combination of desires. Sometimes we might create something that is more Gabbana. Sometimes it might be more Dolce. But what we create always has to arrive at some kind of agreement. So if you had to choose one word to describe this 20-year-old era of style, it'd be sexy. Backstage at the runway shows, the pair are famous for offering only one direction to their models, molto sexy. Whether the look be a little dominatrix or involve volumes of fabrics to emphasise a feminine silhouette. So how do Dolce & Gabbana describe their ideal women, the inspiration for their designs? They say she is strong, she likes herself and she knows she is liked. She's a cosmopolitan woman who has toured the world but who doesn't forget her roots. A woman who'll team a sexy piece with a masculine pinstripe suit and she always, always wears very, very high heels. The designer's Baroque collection is inspired by their own luxurious lifestyles. Not content with owning four stores, a bar, a spa and a barber shop in Milan, these emperors of decadence have added a gold-guided restaurant to their hometown businesses. Their beautiful houses and apartments are filled with an eclectic mix of Russian carpets, zebra skin chairs, Egyptian vases and pictures of Marilyn Monroe. Though no longer a couple in the intimate sense, there's no splitting up the famous name. Signors Dolce and Gabbana have a very strong brand, which also ties them together to the tune of over $720 million. The Dolce and Gabbana label is now an institution more solid than the average high society love match. So remember the Dolce and Gabbana life motto? More is more. It's worked for them. They're not the kind of couple you see splashed over the tabloids. No affairs, sex scandals, no public breakups. They're just rich, famous, talented and happy. But hey, we're not jealous, are we? Matthew Broderick and Sarah Jessica Parker are the classic New York power couple and they've got it all.
He's a Broadway star and she's a screen siren and they couldn't be more different. He's the athletic outdoors person, she's the city girl. So it's a happy compromise, living half the time in New York City, frequenting the arts, and the other half at their holiday home in County Donegal Island. Hmm, sounds romantic. They may be opposites, but they're both at the top of their game. Matthew Broderick started acting straight out of high school over 20 years ago and has simply never stopped. He's a shy, unassuming actor who has already starred in more than 30 films and won two Tony Awards. But whatever he does, Matthew Broderick will always be known as Ferris Bueller, the cocky high school senior of 1986's cult film Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Now in his 40s, he's had a record-breaking run on Broadway, starring with Nathan Lane in The Producers earning a handy $100,000 a week. Not surprisingly, Broderick's biggest fan is wife Sarah Jessica Parker, who admits she can't name anyone as multi-talented as Broderick. About their marriage, Parker says, not one day goes by that he doesn't make me laugh. who balances a heavy workload as an actress, fragrance developer and clothing designer, is also a mother to the couple's young son. She says although the couple has a jousting social life, she tries to be home to tuck him in at least four nights a week. Yeah, it's sure hard doing a balancing act in Manolo Blunix. Sarah Jessica Parker's long-running, highly successful TV series Sex in the City made her a fashion icon to women all over the world. Women wanted her extravagant New York style, the fabulous frocks of the fancy free city singleton. And now they can have it. Parker's income involves some very lucrative endorsements. She is rumoured to have earned $38 million through her endorsement deal with Gap Clothing. Without the regular pay packet from a hit series, over $150,000 an episode, you have to be inventive in self-promotion. SJP makes a pretty penny to the tune of seven figures for her perfume Lovely, which has earned a coveted place in the world's top 25 prestige fragrances. Maybe that's where she got the idea for her next perfume, Covet. Parker earns a 10% royalty on every bottle of the best-selling fragrance. And thank God you Style icon Sarah Jessica Parker only wore designer clothes in Sex and the City. So it has surprised her fans that her own sportswear line, Bitten, is a totally different concept. Bitten offers affordable fashion for the masses, with every item priced less than $20 in sizes 8 to 22. Although she's been criticised for not actually wearing the cheap and cheerful label, she's got a pretty good excuse. You see, she's a size 6. Theirs is a marriage rare in Hollywood, and they like to keep it under wraps. Suffice to say, she kind of likes the way Ferris Bueller turned out. And he's just pleased the Sex in the City star finally found her man. They shoot pictures. Don't they? They sure do, and anyone who's anybody wants to be in them. They are the powerhouse of the art house, the Cohen brothers. Joel and Ethan Cohen have built a reputation as one of the most visionary filmmaking teams around today. They write and direct their eccentric films with a unique blend of wry humour, arch irony, sparkling dialogue and often brutal violence. Their films pay tribute to classic movie genres, especially film noir, but with a fresh, postmodern feel. It's a winning combination and Hollywood's hottest stars are clamouring to be cast in the latest Cohen masterwork. 
they have a they have a very uh, mirthful outlook on the knuckleheads of the world, and they and they think they're very viable subjects for motion pictures. And I think they're the only guys who can really make these kind of films. Those guys are magicians. Uh, I'm not sure how they do it, but they do it. You know, whatever they set out to do, they always uh, end up uh, being successful at it. Beginning with Blood Simple, their brutal, stylish 1984 debut, the brothers went on to amass an impressive body of work. The visions get more ambitious and the budgets get bigger, a lot bigger. From the low-budget screwball comedy Raising Arizona with Nicolas Cage and Holly Hunter, which grossed $22.8 million in the box office in 1987, to the 1990 gangster movie Miller's Crossing, starring Albert Finney and Gabrielle Byrne. The Coen brothers' reputation grew with every subsequent release and took a massive leap forward with their next movie, 1991's visually stunning Barton Fink, an unlikely commercial success. The brothers couldn't believe their luck. Could it be possible to make the film you want to make and make big money? Not so fast, you guys. In 1994, with their stock at an all-time high, the Coens attempted their first big-budget feature film, The Hudsucker Proxy, insisting on an elaborate set of a 1950s New York skyline, which took 27 craftsmen three months to build. The film was a massive commercial failure, making back only $3 million of its $30 million budget. The Coens bounced back to make the low-budget Fargo, starring Frances McDormand, who is incidentally married to Joel Cohen. The film was a huge success, winning two Academy Awards, including Best Actress for McDormand. And it's the golden glint of Oscar about the duo that is now attracting the big names. Oh Brother Where Art Thou, shot on a moderate $26 million budget, was to be yet another critical success, highlighting the comic talents of George Clooney, who starred as the oddball lead. The film's bluegrass soundtrack became even more successful than the film, spawning a concert, a concert DVD, and a resurgence in interest in American folk music. 2003 saw the release of arguably the Coen's most mainstream film to date, Intolerable Cruelty, filmed on a whopping budget of $60 million. The film was a throwback to the romantic comedies of the 30s, starring Clooney and Catherine Zeta-Jones and grossing over $120 million worldwide. Call it the X Factor, or maybe the X Squared Factor. There's a magical communion between the brothers, a real mind meld. Actors refer to them as the two-headed director. They share such a similar vision of what they want that actors say they can approach either brother with a question and get the same answer. Which just goes to prove, in the Coen's case, two heads are better than one. Everyone loves Kurt and Goldie. They're the golden couple of Hollywood. They've dated for over 20 years without exchanging vows, so there must be some magic ingredient holding Goldie Horn and Kurt Russell together. If only they could bottle it. Goldie Horn exudes a bubbly effervescence that lights up the screen. And Kurt Russell has the easygoing vibe of an athlete who can make himself at home anywhere. Together they have the type of energetic chemistry that can really elevate a film into a fun fest. They met while filming Swing Shift in 1983. The film was a World War II star vehicle for Goldie Hawn, who was cast as a Rosie the Riveter type. With her husband drafted, Horn attracts the romantic attention of Kurt Russell's character and, as it happens, the man himself. Goldie says of meeting Kurt, he was so real and completely at ease with himself. And I will say he was definitely my type physically, but that's not what hit me. What hit me was his comfort with himself. 
Audiences found the duo fun to watch and even more fun when they were at each other's throats. So it was curtains up on their next film, Overboard. Overboard pits Horn as a spoilt rich socialite against Russell's amiable carpenter character. He tames her in the end, not sure who tamed who in the real life version. Critics say that while both actors are charming, together they are irresistible. And clearly irresistible to each other. A year after Overboard, the couple's son Wyatt was born. The acting duo have had successful careers in their own right. Russell has appeared in more than 50 movies. The best known include Escape from New York, Silkwood and Backdraft. And Goldie Hawn is an Academy Award winning actress and producer, making one successful comedy for almost every year since 1968. It's a happy and busy home. Actually, they have five homes. Between four children, three from previous marriages, their movie making and promoting schedules, the dogs, the housekeeper, the caretaker, and their son Wyatt's serious ice hockey career, it's certainly a full life. The family's $5.4 million Tudor-style mansion in Vancouver has eight bathrooms and 11 fireplaces. Just the thing for warming up after watching the ice hockey. Always welcome in the Horn Russell home, of course, is actress Kate Hudson. Hudson is not Russell's biological daughter, but he takes full credit with Goldie Horn for raising the Hollywood starlet. Goldie Horn said she never thought she would find a man who loved her children as much as she did, until she found Kurt Russell, that is. Kate Hudson is making a splash as one of the hottest young leads about town, starring in top grossing films like How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days and You, Me and Dupree. Hudson describes her famous mum as the woman that I've learnt the most from, always conducting her life in a way that I can look up to. The multi-talented Goldie Horn has written a screenplay for her directorial film debut called Ashes to Ashes, which is set to star her partner. The film revolves around a woman, played by Horn, who loses her husband's ashes while travelling to India to bury them. It's a passionate project, in a passionate life, for two vital entertainers and two crazy ice hockey fans.